Metaphor. Uh, it's brilliant. <laughs> um, and that is your fear, isn't it? That basically this is a, you know, you are a member of a party that promised that we wouldn't stay in the customs union. And your fear is that this deal is semi-permanent membership, maybe permanent membership of the customs union, uh, and indeed would introduce a barrier down the RSC, which you don't want. Yes. Uh, the problem is it doesn't do what the Prime Minister promised that the Prime Minister was absolutely clear that she would not have a separation between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. And not only does this document have a separation, it has a whole annex devoted to how Northern Ireland will be treated differently and how Northern Ireland may come under the auspices of the European Court of Justice in particular areas. Um, when I first heard about the document, mm. obviously it was gossip and it was rumour and it was leaks. Mm. Now the document is available unfortunately, is worse than the gossip uh, and the rumour and the leaks. And it fails the Prime Minister's own promises. And that's the most concerning thing, because a prom Prime Minister must not promise one thing and do another. The Prime Minister promised we would not be in a customs union. A manifesto commitment. Mm. We are in a customs union under the basis of this agreement. And temporary in political terms can mean a remarkably long time. The 1911 Parliament Act is temporary. And income tax was said to be temporary. <laughs> temporary that. is a word <laughs> that should not be trusted in political circles. I mean, it's also quite striking, I don't know if you noticed, but when it talks about the alternative, which would be staying in the so-called transition, which is as, as a sort of non-voting member of the entire EU, which I assume you think might even be worse than the so-called backstop, there's no end date on that in the document. No, that's right. There are two X's for the end date to the extended transition, but the document makes provision for the government to extend the transition, mm. which again seems to me to be against government policy. So we've got government promises, government statements, closely associated with the Prime Minister, all being ignored in this document. And I think that is really serious because I think politics depends on trust and this document is shattering to trust. Now, you've made it clear tonight, you've written to your colleagues, saying that you can't possibly do anything but vote against this if it comes to Parliament. But uh, is there something else that you might do? In the previous few weeks, when you've been critical of the direction of travel on Brexit, you've said that what you wanted to do was change the policy, but not the leader. Hmm. Do you think the time has changed for your party to change the leader? Well, no Conservative ever wishes to be disloyal to the leader of the party. The Tory party is at its strongest when it is loyal. And the case that I've made is that I disagree with the policy, but not the individual. Hmm. There comes a point at which the individual and the policy are so inextricably interlinked that that argument ceases to have any validity. Yeah. I think we are coming very close to that point. But we're not at that point? We are not at that point. Because? Let, well, let's see what the Prime Minister says in her statement tomorrow. Oh, OK. Uh, but it's very striking. That because there this are, is her policy, isn't the, it? The, I mean, the, this I mean, is now the, the, her policy. I think it is very hard at this stage to separate the Prime Minister from the policy, much though I would wish to do so. And just and, to be... Can I just ask you a question? So, I've spoken to a number of your colleagues who have put in letters calling for a vote of no confidence. Actually, some of them think that there are enough letters now in with Graham Brady to trigger a vote of no confidence. Two questions. One, do you think that we will see a, such a vote? And B, have you put in a letter yet? Um, I have not put in a letter, but if I do put in a letter, at any point, whoever is the leader, oh. at any stage, as long as I'm a Conservative oh. MP, I will always say so. You, you, so you will... You, 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 I will make you it, won't do it secretly? No, I won't do it secretly, because I think... If you come to the conclusion that you no longer believe the leader oh. of the party has your confidence, you ought to tell your constituents that that is the case oh. and your fellow members of parliament. And you're quite close to making that decision? I have less confidence in the Prime Minister today than I did uh, when she first became Prime Minister and leader of the Conservative Party. Certainly this has dented my confidence. But it's very important how divided the Cabinet is. Oh. Because had the Cabinet been completely united, had we heard that it had gone through swimmingly, to use your swimming analogy, and that everyone was content, mm. then you might say, well, the whole of the hierarchy of the party is committed to this. But quite clearly, there are people who take a different view. Senior well, no, I mean, I mean, I mean as, 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 you may have heard I was rung up by, by members of the Cabinet who said only Michael Gove, among the Brexiters in the Cabinet, supported the policy. Um, and that is indicative of not only the divisions within the party, but at the highest level, 
And of course, not only were the Eurosceptics unhappy, but it has been gossiped uh, that the Secretary of State for Scotland uh, is unhappy mm -hmm. because of the way this is going to create an advantage for the nationalists in Scotland by yep. providing for Northern Ireland something uh, that... And what are you, uh, you, you I, I, talking I, about on the programme talking about just earlier, that's absolutely right. Um, and providing something for Northern Ireland that Scotland would like, and also the questions around uh, fishing rights. I mean, are you amazed that no member of the Cabinet has quit? Would you expect members of the Cabinet to quit? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Be bear in mind it took 48 hours after Chequers for there to be any resignations. And Lord Heseltine's departure from Margaret Thatcher's cabinet over Westland was not necessarily the model that people would choose to follow. Have you ever, I mean, you're a bit of a student of political history. When was the last time we saw a cabinet as divided as this one, do you think? I think you've got to go back to Harold Wilson's days. If it's right that her Secretary of State asked for a vote and was shouted down by the Cabinet Secretary. Well, nobody's denying that Esther McVeigh uh, asked for a vote of... Uh, which is an extraordinary thing to do. I mean, I, 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 mean, I don't think I've ever heard of a vote but, but, but Harold Wilson had votes in his Cabinet. That, is, as far as I am aware, was the last time votes were a frequent aspect of yeah. Cabinet government that the Prime Minister usually expects to be able to get consensus, not least because people are only in the Cabinet because they're appointed by the Prime mm. Minister and the Prime Minister can hire and also fire. So people's roles within the Cabinet are dependent upon the Prime Minister. And so by and large, the Prime Minister tends to get her own way. It's very remarkable that this hasn't happened. It's very important. And I think it is um, indicative of the lack of enthusiasm for this bad deal. Aren't you, in your own terms, playing with fire, though, by bringing about and what looks to many people to be inevitable, which is that this policy will fail. The Prime Minister says that if this policy fails, there are only two possible outcomes. One would be a no-deal Brexit, which she thinks would be very economically damaging. You know, you, you, you may disagree. But equally, she says it is now... This is the first time I've ever heard her say this. She says that it is possible we would simply not end up leaving the EU. I, I heard you making that point earlier in the programme. Um, in relation to the Prime Minister's fears about no deal, if that's what she really thinks, why did she say that no deal is better than a bad deal? Are, are you suggesting that she didn't believe that when she said it? Or that she has had a road to Damascus experience? Or that she just felt like saying this to threaten people this afternoon? It really isn't credible to have said no deal is better than a bad deal, then to provide people with a bad deal and say no deal would be really, really terrible. I mean, that doesn't carry any credibility at all. On the other side of it, uh, how would we stay in? The legislation is all in place for us to leave on the 29th of March. As the clerk to the House of Commons, the very distinguished Sir David Nartsler, said in evidence to the Brexit Select Committee, parliamentary motions cannot overturn legislation. There would need to be new legislation, and that can only be introduced by the government. So Theresa May really threatening people, as Prime Minister, with bringing legislation to reverse an act of parliament she passed just a few months ago, I don't think that makes any sense either. So this type of threat, this type of, if you don't do this, I'll punish you, is really unprime ministerial. It's deeply undignified and not the sort of thing she should be saying. I mean, one thing that does seem to me to be pretty sort of clearly coming towards us at a rate of knots is a constitutional crisis, because what we do seem to see yeah. at the moment is a huge split between MPs, mm -hmm. most of whom don't want this deal, and an executive which says it does want this deal. I'm not quite sure where this leaves us I'm not in the sure end. the executive really does want the deal, does it? Well, the <laughs> Prime Minister might. does. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, how serious do you think this is going to be in terms of shake, shake, shaking...? It is completely and utter, utterly deadlock in... The politicians, I have to say, when all of us... Uh, when when Jacob, who obviously, you know, I famously like... Oh, no, I'm talks, talking about a fan! Yeah. I don't believe it! Oh, dear, well, what a day. Goodness only knows what'll happen. <laughs>